takes a lot of courage to stand up here. The future of the caring force isn't people like Andy, Michael, myself. It's people like CORE. There, as she said, there's over 100,000 workers who do this work, and it's when the 100,000 people are mobilized for their economic future that the Caring Force will be even more successful. With that, I'd like to uh, introduce a couple of people I've known for a while from Set the Seven Hills Foundation, so, Jean and Karen Kuzak from the Worcester area, and Karen lives in a group home, and she's going to talk to you about the importance of staffing in her life. Not too late to 
help current staff and future staff to want to come instead. My staff work hard and do a great job working with me. They need a raise in pay for the good work they do so that it will be easier for them to stay. Here is my mom who will tell you the rest of our story. that she needs in order to have a good quality of life. Unfortunately, the staff who work in Karen's direct, as Karen's direct care workers often have to sacrifice their own quality of life in order to help Karen have a good quality in hers. Entry-level direct care staff makes about twenty-two dollars to $23,000 a year. If they are the sole supporter of themselves, a spouse, and two children, they are living at the poverty line of $23,550, far less than the median income that is around $50,000. Our direct care staff works hard for so little compensation. So what is life like at the poverty line? It is one impossible choice after another about what to pay for, what bills to let go, and what should hang on till the next payday. One of Karen's direct care workers, who she loved, left for a job at Home Depot. She told us that a direct care worker's salary makes it impossible to catch up with bills if you get behind. Staff often leave work exhausted and may not get to go home. Many go to a second job so that they can make ends meet. Some staff try to fit in additional schooling so that they may have better job prospects for the future. We spoke to some of the staff in Karen's house and found that four have second jobs and seven are going to school. I see staff who look exhausted. They probably are. Sometimes they seem to have little energy. They probably don't. Being totally responsible for the care of an individual who is unable to care for themselves is daunting, formidable, difficult, intimidating, but can be very rewarding. The work needed to care for Karen and others like her is often demanding hard physical work. Multiple trainings are required to do this job. One of the most challenging is learning medication administration, something that if not done safely has the potential to do great harm. Karen's house is at the top of a hill and the road becomes almost impassable in the snow or ice. What other job requires you to stay until other staff can relieve you? Four times this year, employees have had to put the responsibilities of their family aside until they could be relieved from work. In noble fashion, they sacrifice the quality of their own family life in order to support others in a job where they are so poorly compensated. Karen has lived in a 24-hour staffed residence for the past 13 years. The staff we have met are all different. Not all staff hired have been appropriate to be a direct care worker. Some staff take this job as an entry-level position. Others have life and work experience. Some start this job only to meet their own needs, or they can't understand how to work with individuals like Karen. Others are not willing or able to do all that the job requires. They don't last long in this work. The majority of employees are dedicated, hardworking, and capable. They take this job because they care about the people they are hired to support and love what they're doing. It is important to keep these staff once they're hired and trained. Some staff with little life experience need to learn how to cook and about what makes a well-balanced diet. Teaching them what they need to know is very difficult and time-consuming. This training and many others is up to the house manager and staff who have been at the house long enough to know what to do. Sometimes after a worker is trained, they realize the responsibility they have is greater than the compensation that they receive, and they leave to work where compensation is similar or better for less responsibility. We asked our staff about the challenges they face, and they replied that continued staff turnover is most difficult. Once trained staff leaves, the process of training starts again with a new staff person. 
We haven't kept track of the many staff who have come and gone in Karen's house, but another mother of an individual in another four-person residence has. In the 10 and a half years that her daughter has lived there, there have been 114 direct care staff, five house managers, and six nurses who have come and gone. We asked the staff in our house why people leave so often. They, uh, they thought it was due to pay. Staff turnover is difficult for staff, but most difficult for the individuals in their care. Can you imagine how you can maintain your dignity when 114 individuals have been involved in doing your most personal, intimate care over 10 years? Karen has had some staff who, of whom she has become especially fond. One of those staff talked about, applied for, and was accepted in a school program and planned to leave all over a six-month time span. Karen must have cried about the prospect of her leaving at least once a week during this whole six-month process. My husband and I are getting old. We thank God for Karen's staff and that she has a good place to live almost every day. As parents, we have to know that we can trust Karen's care to others, so staff turnover is equally discouraging for us. We can hardly get to know the names of staff, making it difficult for Karen to connect with them. We have to improve the salaries enough so that we can recruit and retain professional staff. Eventually, direct care staff may be able to leave, have only one job, go home to spend time with their families, and be able to pay the bills at the end of the week. Maybe we can begin to break the cycle of poverty by increasing salaries even a little. Increasing salaries will help staff to know that we recognize the good work that they do and that we respect them as health care providers. It will also ensure that Karen and the one in 10 Massachusetts residents who receive services will keep their quality consistent care. Thank you.